But the perfect research environment certainly should be built around the swimming pool. Unlimited funding sources. Enough to sponsor free coffee and a happy hour every evening. Where your colleagues dance with you at every party and there's free beer every Friday. The perfect research environment is that one in which you realize that you're going to be interacting with a lot of freaks around. And perhaps you even turn into one of those. So I think the environment in a particular research institution is extremely important for the success of a PhD. Of course, it is absolutely important that there is a sufficient amount of funding because uh, working when there's a shortage of money is a pain in the neck. But what is even more important is that there is a sense of cooperation, that people are trying to work together rather against rather than against each other, that they are willing to talk about their research, that they're willing to share their results and that they're willing to help each other. A perfect research environment for me involves three things. First, the infrastructure and resources to do your experiments the best possible way. Second, a spirit of academic freedom where you can freely explore um, the world of science and do even crazy experiments. And third, uh, an infrastructure of colleagues around you which are from different fields but are interested in each other's science. So if you have the right uh, environment, so the right people surrounding you, I think um, you have a much, much higher chance of um, coming up with really cutting edge, good quality research. You're also constantly challenged by your colleagues. Uh, is the quality of your research good enough? Is this something that you're, uh, that you're certain of? You, you are doubly critical and, uh, and I think much more stimulated. I think the perfect research environment is, uh, first of all, um, an institute that has uh, really good facilities that are able to help you with methods that maybe your lab has no expertise in, but that they can help you and get, give you feedback and help you obtain the results uh, that you need. Also, what's really important, what is really overlooked sometimes, is good services that help you with, with everyday things like washing the, the, the dishes and uh, generating media and um, reagents for the lab. <laughs> It's difficult sometimes to imagine how different doing science can be in, in different institutes. So if you don't have experience firsthand in having worked in different places and, and seeing, being able to compare how science is done uh, in different places, definitely talk to people that have traveled around and that have seen how it's done. Probably one secret is don't ask the PIs about this. Ask the other students. They are usually much more honest. I would say that trying out is the best. Of course, you cannot do that directly at the PhD level, but maybe you can you know, work as a research assistant or as a technician beforehand if you are unsure about a certain area that you want to follow up or a certain lab, which is what I did and it was extremely useful. So, so my advice is also to, um, during the selection process, really, really talk to the people, uh, really find out um, all the informal things, for example, if the lab has good funding, if the lab has a good publication record, because that indicates that, uh, that uh, you'll be encouraged to go to a lot of conferences, to get in touch with other scientists from your field. I think it is also very important, the social aspect. With this, I mean the city that you are going to live in. I was in another place in Europe where I was also um, accepted in. But when I look at the city and knowing me, how am I socially, I was thinking, well, it's nice, it's a good scientific institute, but um, this is it, that's all of it. So I think I'm made for larger cities. I felt here more comfortable. And part of the reason why I decided to be in this institute is because of Vienna. And Vienna is a wonderful city. <laughs>